am Alexandra Harbushka, founder of Life with Herpes, founder of alexandraharbushka.com, founder of Secret Society Wellness, and I think that's it for now. Welcome. Today is Friday. Oh my gosh, TGIF. It's freezing in Vegas. It is 41 degrees. We had a little bit of hail, little snowflakes. It was awesome. Hey, Autumn. Hey, Meredith. Hey, what's Izzy? Hey, Mariana. Uh, if you guys, let's see. I just want to make sure we talk about it really quick about the Secret Society virtual retreat that is happening March 27th and 28th. Today is the last day to buy your ticket. And uh, we did that because we are sending you uh, some goodie bags. I have some sneak peeks. I'll talk about them in a second. Um, hey, Autumn. Yeah, so we have um, goodie bags going out. We want to make sure that you receive them prior to the retreat. Uh, we're going to have Stephanie Boyd as a guest speaker. We're going to have Suwasit, who is an exotic dancer, teach us some moves. Um, I'm going to speak. My husband's going to speak. It's going to be great. I'm excited about it. Okay. Hey, it's Ashley Fallon. Okay. Feel free guys to ask your questions here. Uh, you could add them into the chat or you can, let me just, um, uh, and I'll answer them. You could also go live with me. We had someone go live yesterday. It's a lot of courage, but it's awesome because you get to ask your question um, in person, I guess close to in person that we have. Is anyone else ecstatic that it's Friday? I feel like I'm looking at myself in this. I look exhausted. It's Friday. Okay, question. Do you breastfeed? Yeah, I do. Oh my gosh, breastfeeding is my favorite thing ever. Someone, I was at my husband's office the other day and someone asked me what's my favorite thing about being a mom and I said breastfeeding. It was a real big challenge for Clinton and I. Hey Jules, it was a real big challenge for Clinton and I in the beginning but now it's my absolute favorite thing and I know he's a year and it might start getting a little weird but it's my favorite thing ever. So I don't ever wanna give it up. I joke and I'm like, I'll give it up when he's 25 years, not months. Anyways, okay. If you have HSV1 and share a drink with your baby, can they get it? Technically, they can. Um, it's anybody you'd share a drink with if you have an active lesion, if you have an active outbreak, uh, that drink or however you're sharing that, whatever that fits the, the, the cup or the straw or the bottle, the glass, whatever it is, that, um, I know, pretty funny, right? About the 25. Um, Anyways, that is a vehicle in which you can transmit herpes. So if you have an active lesion or if you're shedding, the problem is you don't know when you're shedding. So you're only contagious with an active lesion and when the virus is shedding. Once again, we don't know when the virus is shedding. Personally, with uh, the way I've handled my oral herpes and Clinton is that this is something that I cannot protect him from. There's a lot of people in his family that have oral herpes. There's a lot of people in his family that have herpes, um, not just me. And um, he can come in contact with it from them. He can come in contact with it at school. He can come in contact with, he's not in school yet, but when he goes to school, he can come in contact with it um, throughout his life. So this is not like some rare virus disease that he's gonna get that's gonna be some detriment to his life. I cannot protect him from this. And um, so therefore he's gonna be exposed to it regardless of me having it or not. Um, obviously I don't purposely, like if I had a cold sore, I wouldn't purposely kiss him, right? Um, but anyways, yeah, that's just how I look at it. I feel it does more harm not to kiss him, hug him, squeeze him, love him, share, and do those things with him than it would be to, to like, like, oh, I have herpes, right? Um, it'd be like, I'd have to ask everybody that he comes in contact to never do anything. Like, don't don't touch him, he's in a bubble, right? And that's that's not healthy, that's not how we're made, made to be. So that's my personal take on it. If you don't have kids, use that um, with someone you love, use it with your family, like use that mindset with family members, with people you love, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your spouse, whoever it is, um, kiss them, hug them, love them, share. It's just part of human touch, human interactions is part of life. Um, just because you have herpes doesn't mean you're going to be the one that could potentially transmit it to them. They come in contact with it all the time, whether they know it or not. Hey, Christina. Hey, Hannah. Hey, Adrian. 
Do I get flu symptoms with every outbreak? That's a good question. Uh, no, not anymore. I used to get that a ton. I would definitely get swollen lymph nodes. And um, that's usually a sign for me like something's happening, whether it's an outbreak or like I'm getting a cold. But swollen lymph nodes are usually a big one. I don't get the flu symptoms so much anymore. I don't get um, don't get that like that fever. Um, but I do if I do feel run down or my lymph nodes are swollen, I do do use that as like oh something's going on. What's going on? Um, do I need to boost my immune system? Should I have some more vitamin C? You know what's what's going on? So I definitely take note of that. Can you be on birth control while you have herpes? Absolutely, Autumn. Um, birth control is has nothing to do with herpes. Herpes really doesn't have an impact on anything else in your life. It's it's so birth control, and that's another thing. Birth control does not protect you from herpes, and the herpes antiviral doesn't protect you from birth control or anything like that, um, or from getting pregnant. Uh, I've had people ask me like, hey, if I'm on birth control, does that protect me from other STDs? And that does not, it has nothing to do with that. It, it prevents the egg and sperm from having conception. It prevents the egg from dropping. So um, yeah, you can be on birth control. And I've been on birth control, you know, different times in my life since I've had this. I've been off of it different times in my life. So um, yeah, definitely, definitely. But talk to your doctor, see what works best for you. Does shedding happen before an outbreak or just after? Um, we don't know. We don't know when you're shedding because it's it's silent. Um, definitely the virus is active when you have an outbreak. Like it's there. I'm just using my mouth as an example because we're here, but it's there, right? Um, but it, we don't we don't know. So the way I handle that one too, people are like, well, I don't know. And how do I know? And the like maybe the anxiety, the unknown. I look at it as this is something I cannot control. I have no control of, over having shedding i don't know when it's happening so therefore i it's non-existent to me uh does having hsv1 and 2 genital i okay i have hsv1 and 2 genital um for six years for two but no outbreaks ever i took and I, one took three years first outbreak. Okay, I'll do that again. I have HSV 1 and 2 genitally, six years, but for two, wait, but for, wait, for two, but no outbreaks ever. One took three years for first outbreak. Okay, sorry, my reading skills were tough on that one. Can I still get HSV 1 orally? Um, if you have the antibodies, then you cannot retransmit it to yourself if you don't have the antibodies you can potentially um transmit it to yourself so i was just on an emergency call with somebody and she's like i've had it for three months um hey marisol i love seeing your text by the way or your dm um so i was on an emergency call with somebody and she said that she just, she's been positive for three months but doesn't have the antibodies. So the point is in that is she can still transmit to other locations on her body until you have the antibodies is when you are um, not going to transmit it to other locations. So to answer your question, you'd have to see if you have the antibodies. I'm sure after six years you have it. Uh, when are Cosmopolitan, how soon did you experience Winner Cosmopolitan, I'm a win. I'm a win all the way. I love the win. Um, Cosmopolitan's awesome. I'd say it depends on who you're going with too, but I just, I love the win. I love the restaurants. I love the culture there. I love the service. I love, the, I already said the restaurants. I love the food. I love the pool. I love the shops. I love the way it smells. It's like a, it smells so good. I'm a win, okay. But I'm not gonna downplay the Cosmopolitan if it, that's your jam. Okay. How soon do you experience your first outbreak symptom? I was within like a couple, like a week. I, I was that with a few days. I'm trying to think. I was on vacation with the guy I was dating over the weekend and like Sunday night or Monday I had symptoms. So it was pretty quick. Hey, what other questions do you guys have? Oh, while you guys are coming up with questions, feel free to ask them there. Gosh, my phone's like blowing up too. 
Okay, so the retreat is the 27th and 28th of March. So doors close the day to purchase, which is kind of hard because it's like still two weeks to go. But um, we send you gifts in the mail and we just want to make sure that you receive them prior to the uh, retreat. So these are just a sneak peek. This I have not, this is not for sale yet. This is the soap. Um, Bill used all the soap and he keeps trying to take my sample one and I'm like, no, this is my sample, but it is awesome. I love it. It, um, it has CBD in it. So it helps with any pain that you may have. Also, if you have sore muscles, it's great. So we have the soap and then we have a rescue bomb. So we have, those are just some two examples that I have on hand for you guys to see what you get in the mail. I'm excited. If you want to sign up, head on to the link in my bio and go to the retreat sign up. It's a virtual retreat. I'm excited for you guys to be there. Like I said, we have Stephanie Boyd speaking, Suwasset. I'm speaking, my husband's speaking, it's gonna be fun. Okay, so any last questions, guys? Um, oh, I'm glad you added the Vegas question into the mix. I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad. What's my skin routine? I'm not, I go like super crazy with it and then I don't go crazy with it. So um, I was pretty religious about getting a facial once a month. I just feel like it's really important to get all the extractions out. I've been really busy with a baby, um, so I have not, but I like to do facials. Um, I definitely clean my face every single night. I will not go to bed without a clean face. Um, and the products I currently am liking, I, I like two products, like Heroes Beauty, and I also like La Mer products. Those are the two that I use. Um, I have not been exfoliating. Yeah, I use the lip balm, the Excited Wellness lip balm. I'm obsessed with. I can't go to sleep without it. That's my routine. Thanks for asking. Is the rescue balm just for lips? No, that. And thanks for asking. You could also use it genitally as well if you have an outbreak. That. So actually, no. Here's the rescue balm. Sorry. This is for. Okay, we have the Lifesaver lip balm, which is for your lips. It can be used other places on your body as well. And then we saying the rescue balm for the same thing. It is a balm, so it it is for your genitals, but you also can use it um, on your, like if you have sore muscles, um, you know, when I work out, like I've been skiing, I've been using it. I've also used it on my son, um, his diaper rash. There is CBD in it, so that's up to you. Do what you want with it. I've used it on his diaper rash and it like cleared up overnight. Um, so there's other ways to use it, but I did design it for an outbreak, a genital outbreak. Okay, guys, I will see you all soon. I appreciate every single one of you. Thanks for checking in. I really hope to see you in, at the retreat. It would be so much fun to see people that are, that like are part of the Instagram community at the retreat. So it'd mean a lot to me and I will see you all soon.